you really clicked on that. Like, really? Who cares about the hag? Boring, weird people, that's who. The kind of people who stare at you unflinchingly at dinner and chew on an uncooked potato before complimenting it with a glass of Axe body spray. But as I played the hag, something dawned on me. She came out in late 2016. It is now 2022, and in that whole time, the developers have never touched her. Trapper, Wraith, Hillbilly, and Huntress had their add-ons remixed, while the Doctor and Nurse received full reworks. Hag was minimally updated in October of 2018, then never again. The only other killer like that to my knowledge is Myers. The Ship of Theseus is a philosophical question. If you have a ship that you ride for a long time, and slowly begin to repair it with new parts, what happens when you replace the last piece of the ship? Is it the same ship? What I'm getting at is that with every change, the heads-up display, the powers, the maps, that's what this killer is. One of the last creaky floorboards. A testament from an old group of developers that definitely don't want people clicking on this thumbnail and rediscovering their work from almost six years ago. Hence why, even though I recorded a few games with her, I believe it is way more fitting to reuse this footage I recorded several years ago, at least until it runs out. Hag came out in the game's beta, with a short trailer followed up by a developer stream then released in the next three days. Just some dude sitting in front of a poster being chill, because they're only talking to 14,000 people instead of a million. Hell, Dave became creative director this day. Ooh. <gasps> Boom! Damn. They're having a good time. Makoti is literally eating yogurt while chatting. And after this, they're gonna go back inside and tell the Westworld team that they need to speed up development with any means possible. I do want to say for the record that her update brought the worst map into the game. It's a brown messy swamp that looks like Behavior's bathroom. It's got some cool things like the crows that set off every time someone goes on the boat, or the maze under the boardwalks, though the big thing for me is just how oppressive being there for the 500th time is. So to counteract that, I played my games using these cute little add-ons that have been long removed from the game. They only slightly increase your chances of going to a map. Small pipsqueaks that were too annoying in the blood web, but not terrible enough to be banned overall. And if I was going to avoid the backwater swamp, by fuck I was gonna do it with a prayer. I've always been someone much more interested in emotionally interfacing with my games over trying to win them. It was why, even though everyone else hated it, the Hawkins map was one of my favorites, and the RPD has slowly replaced it as my newest favorite. Though, I guess my impressions of this chapter now are just as viable as they are today. What did Patch 2.3 do? Nothing. And the fact that they have never changed the hag implies one of two things. Either behavior is content as long as people aren't complaining, or this is their idea of peak design. The hag is a trap-setting killer. She does a little swish and flick with her hand to make a magic triangle. If the survivor gets too close to the triangle, a fake version of the hag jumps out from it. You may then teleport to that trap and hit the survivor. It allows her to quickly cut off and surprise foes. She's capped by a few things. For one, she has to be reasonably close to the trap to jump to it, the phantasm only stays up for a few seconds, and if the survivor has a flashlight, they can burn away the trap altogether. You also don't have any real momentum when teleporting, but the hag can jump out like lightning and get that hit if you're fast on the trigger. See, that's where the real issue is. If the behavior of 2022 made this, she would need to rev up her power with a fucking diesel engine. In fact, the best tip I have for playing hag is to make sure you've placed your traps out in the open and pretty much have every single one down. Like you're one of those annoying guys leaving an advertisement on my car in the Stop and Shop parking lot. It doesn't hurt to booby trap a pallet or even a generator, but getting a trap in the open means that you can also catch them when they're without options. You're slower than the other killers, so you need to think differently about how you play her. There's no lore excuse for her being slower, other than that her name is The Hag, and her favorite song is probably by Elton John or something. Because of this, you'll need to rely on the traps to get quick cuts on people running away from you. Sure, you could place a trap during the chase, but the surprise of the trap is what makes them strong. The power is effectively a think fast. Once that trap is triggered and their camera does that annoying thing where it locks onto it, the ball is in their court. They can try to spin the trap, but you can always not hit the teleport button and make them look really stupid. Once the survivor knows exactly where it is, they can become cheeky. Either run to the next loop or plan how they're going to react to that trap. You might still get them if you guess right, but you're giving them planning power that they don't need. One of the things that the Hag chapter did that DVD doesn't really do anymore is theming in her kit. But the general process for creating perks seems to be that all 500 of Behavior's employees pitch a ton of ideas at the same time. Then one dude has to scratch them all into a semi-playable state. The Hag came with three hexes. A new idea, and they said, okay, we're not gonna drip feed this, we're just doing it all at once. Before we go any further, I need to know if I gotta explain hexes to you. You are the guy who clicked on this. 
Hex perks spawn totems that house their perk inside it. If the survivors find where the hex is, they can break it or turn it into one of their boons. The trade-off is that hypothetically speaking, these perks bring the heat in exchange for their disposability. I can't explain to you in detail about how this is like cutting off four of your fingers and playing dice with them, so you're just going to have to do the risk-reward rationale on your own. Hex Third Seal inflicts blindness on survivors that you hit. This blindness persists until the totem is broken. Blindness covers up aura reading, either from survivor perks or natural natural ones, like the survivor dangling on a hook. Aura reading perks for survivors are good, but they aren't the best. For example, empathy used to be really common, allowing survivors to find more injured people. Then it just sort of stopped one day. Nobody uprooted it or changed it to be worthless. The crowd just became more stoic to that kind of thing. A weaker meme that was no longer needed. And as you can see, that's also the end of the current footage, so time to use some newer games. Hex Ruin is a curse on generators. Based on your level of the perk, a certain number of survivors will be cursed. Those cursed survivors- okay, yeah, you know what I'm up to, but let me finish. Those cursed survivors cannot complete good skill checks. Good skill checks won't cause the generator to explode, but they do regress the generator by 5%. Now, that's not the perk anymore. We all know this. Though, let's wonder. What would this perk be like today? Ruin was so insanely meta that the developers reworked it. Despite them not believing it to be OP, but the fact that it was used in almost 80% of games at high rank and 45% of games overall forced their hand. However, that was a long time ago. Would it follow the empathic connection and get phased out as strategies change? I don't know for sure and will never know for sure, though there's a part of me that would like to see this come back in some way as a new debuff. However, there's more to the story than Ruin's power level. What happened to the people who relied on it when they were threatened with the scariest thing? Change. It felt like this oppressive act of idiocy. How could they do this when survivors still had decisive strike and borrow time and sprint burst and- When, when is the nerfing to killer gonna stop? If you realize that sounds pretty stupid, you're not alone. It is pretty stupid. As for me personally, I don't like the change that much, at least with this state of the game. Oh, okay, yeah. So, so pretty much all about survivors, right? Killer should work harder. Survivors have more fun when they knew they don't have to go for hard skill checks, and also they can choose. Everyone threatened to quit the game, and they all lied about it because they're losers. And yes, I am looking at this with a high-powered sniper rifle that says Hindsight on it. But I can't move my attention off the realization that the current version of Ruin is simply stronger. The current version of Ruin works like this. Whenever a survivor gets off a generator, it automatically becomes damaged and regresses at double the speed. This makes chasing survivors off generators much easier because you don't need to smack it once. Plus, they can't just say fuck you, then tap it to undo your damage. Hell, you can chase the survivor off an almost completed generator and have it back down to zero without needing to camp the damn thing for the entire game. Ruin is the only thing that lets you do that. Without automatic regression and survivors being able to literally undo any damage by just spitting on it, any progress the team makes can be pretty damn close to permanent. The only saving grace was maybe Pop Goes the Weasel. But in a shocking semi-late game twist, Fast forward a few years later, and Ruin is no longer a must-have perk. It's still around, but 80% of the games is a far cry from what I've experienced. And I have two guesses as to why that is. One, the hex system is way too unreliable, either from all the totem-finding perks survivors have, or the fact that they've been playing against the system for five years. Not to mention a boatload of perks that incentivize them to look for totems even without a hex in play. Two, there's a pretty high volume amount of gen stopping perks that are better. Deadlock, Pop Goes the Weasel, and now Dead Man Switch. I knew you could do it, buddy. The last hag hex is Devour Hope. This perk gives you a totem every time a survivor is unhooked 16 meters away from you. At two totems, hooking a survivor makes you faster. At three, you can instantly down survivors with your basic attack. And at five, you can fucking kill them on the ground. There's a lot to say about this as it's an insane perk that basically represents everything wrong with hexes as a concept. If the team can find it early, you might as well have Territorial Imperative equipped for all it was worth. If they never find it, you win. Though as anyone is willing to tell you, hexes spawn in some fairly predictable places, not to mention fact number one. The key to getting Devour Hope to work is to hope that the survivors never assume you have it. Meaning that Devour Hope is mostly effective on less efficient survivors who you hypothetically wouldn't need the advantage against. Sure, I guess it gets you to the next match faster, though if the reward for being good at Dead by Daylight is to play less Dead by Daylight, well... Uh, actually, carry on. 
Hag has what are most likely my favorite add-ons in Dead by Daylight. There's one that is so obviously a remnant of older, less nuanced design, but also changes her to the point where it's not even the same killer anymore. Though I'm getting ahead of myself. The stats you can modify on the Black Catalyst are her teleport range, the speed she sets her traps at, the size of the trap's radius, and how long it stays active after triggering. You can max these out if you want, and I usually do. Specifically the range. As with those, I can guarantee that each trap gives me some use. The disfigured ear deafens survivors for 6 seconds when they trip a trap. This is not obliviousness, it is a loud piercing sound that drowns out everything else, and to be honest, no one cares. The sound that matters is the heartbeat, and 6 seconds is only enough time for your elbow to accidentally knock over your hot pockets. You can flip it for the old woman's heart that gives your terror radius to your phantasm when it's triggered, making you undetectable and the trap to have a large heartbeat instead, which is only really enough time to yell to mom that you dropped the hot pockets. This is the purple that I consider quote unquote uncool. I don't tend to get any effects from it. You can throw in the cracked turtle egg for a few extra seconds, just in case she needs to come down the stairs first, but what do you really expect from 5 random seconds of stealth? If there was a survivor close enough for you to get the drop on them, they probably already heard the music before the trap was triggered. For the final two purples, we're going to pair them up with red add-ons, like a late Valentine's Day, because I think they're both really great but also turn the hag into a completely different character when used together. Our first bachelor is the Rusty Shackles. This prevents the trap from popping out when a survivor steps near it, nor does it grab their camera and passionately kiss it on the mouth. The effects of this are obvious. You can take away survivors' reaction time and attack them when they don't even know they're in trouble. And our Bachelorette is my favorite red add-on in the game, the Mint Rag. The Mint Rag allows you to teleport to any trap on the ground without requiring it to be triggered first, with a brand new 10 second cooldown. This is where I have definitive proof that Hag's design is not from the same brand as the others. It feels like something someone thought was cool and had no idea going forward that this would shame several powers afterwards. In fact, it makes her very similar to the game's currently newest killer, Sadako, a character with insane map control but a lot more nuance. For her to teleport, she needs to manage her cooldowns, enter a special mode before using it, and her warp locations are randomly generated. Hell, the Demogorgon, God bless his soul, could pick his warp spots, but the cost was that you essentially had to ride the fucking MTA to get there. With the Mint Rag, you place a trap, hit the button within any range, and you're there, letting you follow up immediately with an attack, allowing you to control objectives in a way that is honest to God unfair. And all I can do is hope that no one begins to recognize how stupid this is, that no one brings up about how this part of the ship squeaks a little bit too much. The other couple of add-ons we're pairing together are the Scarred Hand, and the waterlogged shoe. The hand removes your ability to teleport to traps. However, the traps themselves are physical. You can't walk through them. This means instead of trapping open areas or objectives, you're locking up tight hallways to guarantee a free shot. Honestly, by description alone, I'd almost flip this in the red, but it is what it is. The waterlogged shoe also removes your ability to teleport, but in exchange, your speed is increased. The special effect is that survivors are slowed within the range of the trap. This combo lets you deny pallets and slow the people that trip them. See, these changes are wonky, but they are game-changing. And I don't mean that they're strong, just game-changing, though they are strong. One of the interesting things about Hag is that she technically has mobility just as fast as, say, Freddy or Demogorgon, but otherwise has zero control over that mobility. It's up to survivors when the option is available to her. So perks like, say, Pop Goes the Weasel are less viable. However, in that weakness, the Hag has a playstyle that makes certain useless perks very good. For example, Forced Penance will break survivors who body block for 90 seconds, rendering them unable to heal. And since you're probably being a very naughty boy with your power, booby trapping a hooked survivor allows you to break anyone attempting to perform a rescue. Hell, if you're chasing someone and another survivor triggers your trap, teleporting there and landing a fast hit will also net you the perk. And if you've played against any hag in the past four years, you'll know that the ability to be at rescued hooks in an instant combos very well with Make Your Choice. This exposes survivors for 60 seconds after after they rescue someone. Not only can you get a near instant trade with this, having someone be exposed for 60 seconds means that if they step on a certain other trap farther away, they're screwed. My next suggestion is monitor and abuse, an old must have. This perk reduces the killer's heartbeat by 8 meters when they aren't in a chase, and increases it by 8 when they are in a chase. Since you are a low speed killer and are therefore still looping the killer shack, being stealthy is very important. Hag's terror radius is defaultly set to 24 meters, and if you go break in her heart, it goes down to 16. This will let you play something more similar to a hit and run playstyle, getting quick hits on survivors that lack reaction time, then finish them off with a random trap out in the wilds. I'm going to combine the final suggestion into two perks because they both serve the same function and they're very specific to trap killers. Hex Blood Flavor blocks off all nearby pallets when you hit a survivor, 
Hex crowd control blocks off a window after a survivor vaults it. Both of these disable options for loops, but most importantly, it forces the survivors to keep moving. If you've played Hag correctly and everyone is near a free trial at the gym, they'll start to run out of ground. You can also set up the no fun zone near your hexes to keep them in play, which is more than I could say for one of the dumb fuck trap killers, at least if they haven't been reworked into something more useful by the time she can even get close to it. Also, lastly, if we're using that mint rag, bust out the floods of rage. These are scourge hooks that reveal auras after an unhook. Not really anything special about it compared to, say, barbecue and chili. I just think it'd be funny if she used Sadako's perk to show the new guy zero respect, like going into her house and stealing a chicken cutlet from the fridge, or maybe some yogurt. God knows the new dev streams have none of that. Now instead of announcing their victories and partying it up, they sit there, staring down the barrel of an angry mob that is just looking for the right target to blame their insanely complicated problems onto. Actually, I don't know how new this is compared to 2016. M. Cote did go on to get bullied with the hag in front of some random Koreans, and that was very vindicating for some absolute psychopaths. The only difference is that now we end our flaming insult with hashtag shirt my survivor. But that's what the hag is all about, right? Not the psychopath bit. Even if she's eh, or boring, or learned by now, she's a remnant, a constant in a landscape of slowly changing variables. Not that that means much. If Dead by Daylight's development were on a line of quality, it would go like this. But there was a time where it was considered hip and cool to play Dead by Daylight, to set aside Overwatch and try that weird little game by those passionate fellas over there. On the other end, though, as DBD pretties itself up, I sometimes start to wonder if the charm was in those imperfections, that in the pursuit of removing those blemishes, we sand off the personality. Hell, everyone's so happy Fortnite removed building, which begs the question as to why the fuck the word fort was ever in there. The hag might get an update, once it seems like a good idea. Behavior will inject her portrait with the wrong EpiPen, they'll put a microphone up to the office washing machine for a new chase theme, and it'll probably be harmless too. No one will be angry. We'll look at the patch notes, they'll seem like healthy changes, and we'll lean back and say, This is good. The new totally overtaking the old, the meme replaced. Goodbye, Dead by Daylight. Hello, Dead by Dalgate. One day, I'll run out of these cute little offerings, too. Like discarded nails. And I guess even if it was just as miserable back then, or full of variety today, it's still been a part of my life for such a long time that it feels inseparable for good, bad, and ugly. And, uh, yeah, that's it, I guess I'm all out of stuff to say. You clicked on that thumbnail. I'm sure you know your way off it, too.